Hey guys, this is Jessica. Welcome back to my channel, The Retro Farmhouse. I hope you guys are doing well. Today's project, I wanted to get into doing something that I've kind of been putting off for a little while, and it's creating like a separate station for my sewing, maybe also some craft needs, but more for my sewing station. I kind of use the same desk for sewing and editing with my computer on there, so it was really getting a little annoying to have to take my sewing machine off and put it back on and set it up. So I had another space in my craft area that I wanted to convert just to have, you know, my own separate space for that. So um, a lot of the inspiration, obviously you guys know that I love vintage type items and I had some items already that I wanted to repurpose. So that was part of the reasoning for um, what I'm creating today. Also, if you've ever seen any of the little white shelves that they have in vintage kitchens and different things. If I can find a picture, I'll put that up here when I'm talking about. I've seen these a lot on Pinterest lately and I really love this. And I wanted to recreate this myself using my scroll saw. So come along with me today and we'll get working on today's project. So to build my shelf, I'm basically just using whatever scrap wood I currently have on hand. So I'm cutting two shelves of equal parts so that they're the same width of the scrap wood that I'll show you here in just a minute. So these are the original two pieces of scrap wood that I'm using and I'm just sanding them down. They were painted white before. So I cut both of my boards smaller than the width of these and now I'm just going to draw a line down one side because I want to cut these out in kind of a scroll pattern that I see in a lot of the vintage type ones that you see like in people's kitchens and things. And I drew two vertical lines here so that tells me where my shelves are going to be screwed into so that way I know where to draw my pattern. And I wanted to draw my pattern a little bit longer than some of the shelves and kind of go out from my line, if that makes sense. That way it's not specifically sitting directly on the line. It did take me a minute to figure out what type of pattern I was making here. And I'm not an expert or anything. I just kind of freehanded this on. Here you can basically see the pattern that I have drawn on here. And I'm going to cut this out with my scroll saw. Next, I took this out to just sand down some of the edges with a fine grit sandpaper. And to make my other piece, I basically laid it on top of the other board and traced this piece so that way I can cut out a similar piece for the other side. To assemble my shelf together, I'm using some wood glue and also my Ryobi brad nailer. I used this in my last video. I absolutely love this tool. I'll put a link below if anybody is interested in where I got this. To add some more stability, I had a leftover scrap piece, so I'm just measuring how much the width is of this, and I'm going to cut that down, and I'm going to apply this underneath my first shelf here. This is gonna add a little bit more stability, but it's also gonna give me a place that I'm gonna be able to use to hang it up later when I put it on my wall. I'm using some DIY paint in mint chip and I'm just going over this in some certain areas that I want to distress back later and have a little bit of that mint paint coming through. Life is a winding road 
And for the overall paint color, I am using my DIY paint and crinoline. I just kind of wanted more of a neutral tone with this, and I ended up applying two coats to this. To distress some of it back, I just used a wet rag and I'm just doing a little bit of wet distressing on the edges so that you see a little bit of that mint chip peeking through. For the next project, I am working on building my little sewing station table here. So I'm basically marking on my wall how tall I want this to be. And then I'm going to frame it with some two by fours. And I cut this to the length that I wanted and I'm using my level to make sure that this is on here straight. And then I draw a straight line so that when I go to put this back up on here, I have a guide to follow. I also took my level and drew some straight lines where my studs are on the wall and I'm pre-drilling my holes so that it doesn't split my wood. Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. Next, I'm taking my tabletop piece and I marked where I want to put my screws in at. And first I'm drilling my pilot holes in here. And then I'm gonna take this bigger drill bit that is about the same width of my screw head. And I'm going to just slightly put this in the wood. Now, if you have a countersink drill bit, this basically does the same, same principle, but I didn't currently have one of those on hand and this works just as well. It's gonna basically sink my screw in there a little bit deeper and then I'll fill that with some wood putty. To create some vintage elements to my table, I am using these reclaimed table legs and they weren't quite as tall as I needed them. So I'm just gonna add a little piece onto the top here. So I am tracing that out and I cut that out with my scroll saw. And now I'm just taking the glue and I'm applying that to the top and I'm gonna brad nail that onto the top. I have had this vintage set of sewing drawers for a really long time. I just love the pattern of these. I got this off of eBay. So I knew when I wanted to make this project that I wanted to incorporate these on my sewing table. So for the drawer, I am creating a little slide in box that this little drawer can slide into with just some scrap wood. To apply this onto my table, I used a clamp. That helps really well if you don't have anybody to help hold this. And I've marked my edge pieces and my middle of where this needs to be screwed into. So as you can see here, the second line here is where my piece of wood is so that I know where to drill down into the middle. Next, I'm gonna add my little sewing drawers. I have four of these. And again, I'm using my clamps. Luckily, these already had pre-drilled holes in them, so I'm just using a shorter screw to screw these in from the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I'm just using some wood filler to fill in the screw holes and this usually dries pretty quick in about 15 minutes or you could wait a little bit longer and sand it. And next, I'm just gonna take some quarter round and I'm going to trim my edge pieces just to give it a little bit more of a finished look. Next, I'm just using a fine grit sandpaper and I'm sanding down those areas where I added the wood filler. And now I'm using my favorite stain, Minwax in Early American, and I'm just staining the top of this table. I made some little wooden storage boxes to keep some of my sewing supplies in. You've probably seen me make these before and I'll put a little link card up above here of a previous video of how I made these if you're interested. And I'm just stenciling just some designs on the front of these. I ended up using a stain to stain these in the color wheat and I'm using the crinoline paint to apply my stencil. I love these little stencils. These were from a Martha Stewart pack that I had. If I can find them, I will link them below in my Amazon link. I've used these for a lot of different projects and I just love that they add just a nice little element. And here's how today's project turned out. I just love repurposing items. This sewing station reminds me of some of the old Singer sewing machines that you see in antique stores, or maybe some of you all actually own some of these. And I also wanted to point out that I drilled some holes for my electrical wires and my foot pedals to go through. I just felt like that made it a little bit easier and a little bit neater looking for a better use. Thank you guys again so much for coming along on today's project. If you like this video, please hit the like button as well as consider subscribing. And leave me a comment below on what you guys are doing to stay busy during this time. And I hope you guys have a great weekend and join us again for our next DIY.